So next up is pre-multiplied. You see this kind of regularly, and some people float between pre-multiplied and unpre-multiplied. And we talked about this when we talked about transparency. But as a rule, you really want to work pre-multiplied where you can. One of the reasons is it helps keep things modular. So in this case, I have a couple different examples. So we have an unpre-multiplied workflow here. So we have this plate. We're going to be pulling a key on it to kind of punch out some areas of it. And then we're going to be putting this color wheel inside those areas. So our end result is this. And this is just for example purposes. And we've done a little color correction on that plate as well just to modify it a little bit. So what we see here is we use a keyer. And if you flip into the alpha channel for the keyer, you can see the alpha that it's created from the image. Then we're piping that into the mask input. And that's an unpremultiplied workflow. And basically what that means is you can't see the result of the keyer until it's merged into an operation where it's doing an operation with multiple inputs. So we can't see what this key looks like pre-multed against the plate until we are adding the color wheel in. So this is a simple version of that same thing. So we start with our plate, we pull our key, we've done our color correction. Now we use the pre-mult node and that actually multiplies that alpha times our plate. So now we can see where our holes are, you know, and this is really a useful thing if you're working with a key where you're right on the edge of having too much noise or not enough noise, or you're getting some artifacting from, you know, another part of the frame that you don't actually want. I really like working pre-multiplied because it lets me see that easier. I don't have to flip into my alpha channel and play it back fully in the alpha channel. I can look at it in full RGB and see if I have any issues. So then we can flip over to our merge and we can see now we have the exact same image, but this is a little cleaner and I like to call this a module. So anytime we have a stack of nodes that are operating on one chunk of image data, that's a module. And you'll hear me reference that a lot. So this module we have, it's a little different, like we're using some different nodes and we're structured a little bit differently. I also wanna note that working this way allows us a little more control over our bounding boxes. When we use a mask input on a merge, the mask input only works a certain way relative to the merge operations and the A, B input. So in this case, to get the expected results, we have to have our B input plugged into our color wheel where we really want our B input plugged into our plate because as we talked about before, that's where our metadata and range data are coming from. So if we were operating like this, now we have to remember to go in and change our metadata and our range information so that they're coming from the correct source and it doesn't cause trouble down the road. But anytime we can not change something, we can leave it vanilla, that's preferable because say you were to make a copy of this node and use it somewhere else, or you forgot and you replaced it, now you have to remember to change those settings in that merge as well. And lastly, this is another version of that pre-multiplied workflow, but this is using a parallel workflow. So in this case, we're doing our key and our color correction in serial. So that means one after another. In this workflow, we're splitting it. So we're doing our color correction on one fork and we're doing our keying on the other, and then we're using a masking operation to bring those back together. So here you can see, we're, we can see our pre-multiplied image, and then we're merging that back to our color wheel. And again, same thing, we can manage our merge, we can use an under operation, and then we can keep our color wheel attached to our A input. That way we don't have to modify anything in terms of metadata or range data on the merge itself. So that's pre-multiplied and unpre-multiplied. The other really strong benefit of this is now this section is self-contained. Same here, this is self-contained. We can work on it in complete isolation to everything else and know exactly what it is. You know, when you work with a unpre-multiplied workflow, you're dependent on this merge where you're bringing multiple things together to see what's actually happening. Where here you can get a pretty good sense of what's happening before you even merge that in. So when you're working with multiple artists or you're working on a really big comp, this is actually working pre-multiplied really makes that faster because you can sort of really create self-contained modules.